you need something made round, you're probably going to use something like this. If you need something made really round, you're probably going to use something like this. What's, what's going on? We don't have that? Why, why not? You make a compelling argument. Luckily, I have a surface grinder, and you can buy something called a cylinder grinding jig to make... Okay, off to the bandsaw. As usual, I'll start by cutting up some bar stock. One piece for the base, two more for the center supports. The stock is then faced off, followed by some mounting holes and a slot to allow one of the centers to slide along the base. As you can see, I'm still desperately trying to figure out how to clear chips without just blowing them all over the shop. Don't worry, I've since put together an air nozzle for the mill and have learned to make peace with the sharp metal shards in my socks. The pieces are then left in a cool, dark place to ferment for an unspecified period of time. Alright, this thing's been sitting on a shelf for several months at this point. Mostly because I don't like how the supports for the centers are coming out. I made some dumb design decisions when I put these together. Uh, design might be a strong word. Either way, those are getting trashed. And we're going to redo those a little, I don't know more well planned out, let's say. Most of the problem with the smaller support blocks is that I just don't have enough room on them for all the features that need to be cut and drilled into them. This much girthier square bar solves that problem. The much simpler support on the dead end of the jig could stay small though. I didn't break a single tap on this project and I am very proud of myself. The pieces were carburized and case hardened, along with some parts from another project. Well, this took longer than expected, but uh, we finally ran into our first real problem. Um, I need to grind off this tab to fit precisely in this slot. The problem is, I didn't leave enough material allowance to account for any potential warp and uh, mill scale eating up some of the stock on the tab and the slot so unfortunately they already fit together without grinding and that's not good um, hmm. I used a small carbide grinding wheel to put a small relief in the side of an aluminum oxide one. That way I could grind the slot in the base. Nothing much needs doing here, the slot will just end up a bit wider than originally planned. Just filling it out with a pin gauge, this seems to have worked pretty well. I need something to beef up the tab on the sliding center support, and this piece of O1 steel is a good size. So I roughly cut a couple pieces out and hardened them. The tab was cleaned up to remove the scale, then roughed up a bit before attaching the bits of O1 with epoxy. After that had set, the built-up tab was ground to a very close sliding fit with the slot in the base. These surfaces fit closely enough that they behave a little strange with some oil on them. They're not mechanically attached at all, but they'll still stick together quite aggressively despite easily sliding on the oil film. I got this angle plate a long time ago and I'm just now getting around to using it, which is too bad because it's finished so poorly that I should have sent it back. The bottom's over 15 thousandths out of flatness and has a lot of noticeable wobble on the magnetic chuck. It's flat on and usable without some rework that I didn't really want to do. The adjustment screw also gets in the way of it going all the way to 45 degrees without it being put up on blocks, which is just incredibly stupid. Unfortunately, it's all I got to work with, so we'd make do, I guess. Pressing onward, it turns out I don't have any T-nuts to fit this size of slot, and I'm too lazy and impatient to make any right now. So instead, we resort to jank. I could grind the V's separately, which would make setup slightly easier. However, doing the whole assembly at once helps ensure the centers sit coaxially. 
The drive wheel needs no precision at all, so printing it out and putting some threads in it manually is the sensible option. That can then be put on a bearing and attached to a temporary center. There are two ideas behind using V-grooves instead of holes to mount in the center. The first is that it's easier to make the mating surfaces very precise. The second is that a cylinder clamped in a V-groove is inherently zero clearance. For that reason, it's very repeatable and will keep the center aligned well. Because the clamp is spring-loaded, the center can also easily move in and out to allow for easy loading of the workpiece and automatically adjust for thermal expansion of the part. The only downside is that they can't hold much weight, but any part that would fit in this jig in the first place isn't going to weigh much anyway. For the record, I have to fight with my cheap FDM printers way too often, but they save such a ridiculous amount of time on parts like this that they're worth it 10 times over. Bit of a small mistake when making one of these pulleys to a tolerance of looks about right. The O-ring is just barely rubbing on the cover. Good thing nobody will ever see this side. This is urethane round belt. It's a solid rubber cord widely used for low power pulley mechanisms. It's pretty stretchy and relatively forgiving of slight sizing issues. Wrapping it around the pulleys and cutting it to length is plenty accurate. To turn the cord into a loop, the belt only needs to be melted at the ends and pressed together. I made this special V-block specifically for aligning the two ends, as that's the only real tricky part. The excess can just be trimmed off after the joint is cooled. Give it a quick tug to make sure it's solid, and it's starting to look like this might actually work. first job for the near-complete jig is to make better centers for itself, so a quick and questionably even heat treat of Samoro 1 is in order. To hold the new center, I turned one of the temporary ones backwards so it could hold the pointed tip. Ideally, the tips of the centers would also be ground concentric to the rest, but I have no good way of actually doing that. Hopefully, this method at least keeps the tips aligned, even if I can't finish them properly. Trying to get this thing set up so it doesn't produce a taper though is a massive pain. Without setting up some indicators or some other way of seeing how far it's being tapped up or down, it's just repeatedly guessing at it, making a test pass, and then trying again. It takes forever, but at least you only have to do it once per setup, not once per part. Which, considering I rarely do anything but one-offs, is not that helpful. These are some pretty pro-looking one-offs though, I can't deny that. Put the new centers on and make some adjustments to the springs, and that's it. It's done. Let's try making an actual useful part. I rough this in on the lathe. I need a way to balance the wheels on the surface grinder, and the arbors made to do so are ridiculously expensive for such a simple part. I get that they need to be pretty precise, but come on. Due to the taper, this arbor not only had to be tapped in once, but twice. What joy. Now, did I measure and grind this accurately enough? Oh boy, I hope I did. That was a pain in the ass. Oh, that's, that's, yeah, baby, let's go. Excellent. According to the ink, however, it's not actually that excellent. It's bearing heavily on the small end of the taper, indicating that the angle on the taper is slightly too shallow. But it still holds well enough, so we press on anyway. I was planning to make some nice, heavy, welded steel assembly for the rest of the balancing stand, but I ran across some rando on YouTube who made a 3D printed one that worked just fine for him. I had some concerns about how accurately my printer could make the surfaces that contacted the hardened bearing rods, but I also considered the fact that I am extremely lazy and decided to try it anyway. It ended up working perfectly well. I thought about putting a very sensitive leveling vial on it, but I realized that the bare arbor by itself would work as well or better for leveling the stand. It's pretty sensitive, though I think the fairly large rods and mediocre surface finish on the arbor is limiting it a little. It does allow me to balance a wheel more than adequately for my purposes, though. There's still a little vibration in the grinder with the wheel and hub removed entirely, and I can't feel any difference between that and the balance of wheel, so we'll call that good enough. The fish scaling on parts is reduced, but not entirely removed. A little disappointing, but some of the wheels I have aren't even usable without balancing. The one I have mounted now was so out of balance that the vibration was causing the head of the surface grinder to slowly lower itself. Can't complain too much. Anyway, that's enough getting sidetracked for now. 
pretty pleased with how this came out overall. Or at least I don't feel the usual urge to throw it out and start all over again to implement all the improvements I thought of while making it. Not, not as strongly, maybe. Hope it was worth your while, and I'll see you in the next one.